Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, I'm going to show you how to abort out of a loop gracefully instead of just killing the process or shutting down access when you're working with your Access VBA loops. Today's question, very similar to yesterday's question. I like to group these things together when I get a bunch of questions in my in my queue list. I try to find the ones that work well together. Uh, David from Germantown, Tennessee, one of my Platinum members. David says, I've got a loop that does stuff, and it takes a good 20 to 30 minutes to run. Sometimes I decide in the middle of that loop that I want to abort it. How can I do this without shutting down access? Well, David, let's talk about it. But for everybody else, I want you to go watch yesterday's video, which is this guy on speeding up loops, because we're going to use the same database, the same loop that we built in that database for today. And go watch all the prerequisites for this one so you understand, you know, VBA, my status box. Uh, what else did we do? A for next loop. Go watch this video and its prerequisites first, then come on back. All right, here's the database we built yesterday. We got this nifty Hello World thing running, right? And let's say this takes a bunch of time. Let's again, let's say you're using uh, you're using the database to send emails, and you realize you got oops right in the middle of it. You got you know 50 of them went out, and you've got 5,000 to go, but you got to make a, a quick change. So you want to put a little button here or a box you can click on to say abort, stop. You know, danger, Will Robinson, cut it out. So how do you do that? Well, if it's you, if you didn't program in an abort, and it's not your end user, you could open up the VBA window right, and hit the stop button right here, the reset button, that will stop whatever process is running, including your loop. All right, so if you happen to be in here, design view, right, let's intentionally slow this thing back down again. Let me, um, let me put this to 10. Okay, now you got to have this thing, you know, accessible. It's hard to sometimes get to this if something else is running, but if the window is open, right, and you're running it, let's go. All right. The, I mean, you could try control break. You could try, you know, a couple of other things, but nothing really is going to work unless you come over here to the VBA window and hit stop. That should stop the process from running. See, it just stopped it. All right. But I don't like doing that. That's not good to do. Your end user can't do that. So we want to give them something nice and easy that they can do. So let's go to design view here. And let's, let's change this to our start button. Not the start button, our start button. All right, let's drop a checkbox right here. Where is it? Checkbox looks like that. Drop it right there. I'm going to change the label to say abort. And let's make it so we can actually read it. Let's go white. And let's change the name of the box itself to abort. All right. And you could set its default value to no if you want. All right, save it, close it, open it back up again. All right, we got our we got our abort box right there. Okay, so let's go back into our button code, and here's where our hello world runs right down here. All right, first thing we're gonna do is say abort equals false when we start the loop. Right, that's because. Um, you know, if you had canceled it on a previous run and you click the button, you don't want it to immediately abort. So we're going to set this to false. Now, somewhere inside your loop, you're going to check to see if the user clicked that box. Okay. With a for loop, you can say it like this. If abort, then exit for like that. That's how you exit a for loop. If you're using a while loop or a different kind of loop, you just build it into the thing here. Like for example, here, I'll just show you, right? If you say like X equals zero and then while X is less than or equal to 100,000, right? And not abort, you do it like that. And then your, your, your while loop will exit out if abort is true, okay? So it all depends on the kind of loop that you're using. But this works for a for loop. Now, the in, the important thing here is you have to make sure you include a do events inside your loop somewhere. Now, do events is one of those things like writing to the screen that takes a lot of processing cycles. All right. It says it basically tells access, hey, uh, you can you can run background processes now. You can accept user input now. Normally it doesn't unless you do events. 
The reason we didn't need it before was because my status sub, my status function, whatever you want to call it, has a do events in it. So you can see the screen being updated. Okay? So I did not need to use do events in yesterday's video. But you normally would need it. And I'm going to keep it in here so that it's not waiting for a do events every, uh, you know, every iteration. It's going to only check it when it writes to the screen. Okay, which is usually good enough for your abort loop. Okay, now after the loop is exited, I'm going to check to see if the user aborted or not. Because it's not done, right? So if abort, then status aborted. Right, and you could do other things in here like change the color and all, whatever you want to do. Otherwise, right, it uh, finished successfully. And then you can do all of this stuff. Right? Get rid of that blank line, and then we'll put the beep at the very end. So, regardless of whether they aborted or finished, it's still going to beep. Okay? Well, let's give it a shot. Debug, compile, come out here, hit the button. It's running nice and slow, and oh, I got a problem. I got to abort. Done. See, start it up again. All right, abort. Bang. See, that's how you do a little abort box. There's a lot of embellishments you can add to this, folks. You want to hide the abort box if it's not in the middle of the loop. Well, just set its visible property, right? That it's visible property to know by default, okay? Then when this starts, abort.visible equals true. If it's got a bound label, the label stuck to the box, it'll also control the label too. And then when you're all done, we're going to say abort.visible abort equals false. Right? Show it during the loop, and then when it's done, hide it again. Save it, debug, compile, come back out, meow, and let's give it a go. Notice how I didn't see it. Now I'll click on it. And it goes, oh, oh, this is important. That's why I'm leaving it in the video. It's important. You can't hide a control that has a focus. When you click on the abort box, it's got the focus. So you can't hide it. So you got to shift the focus somewhere else. All right, where do you want to put it? All right, I'll end that. Let's just put it back on our hello world button. All right, this guy All right there. That's the name of the control, hello world button. So before we hide it, we'll say hello world button dot set focus just like that all right save it debug compile so that's a runtime error that's an error that the compiler won't catch if you debug compile you won't, you won't discover that until you run the code ready go and go see done and the focus is sitting back here on that that's a big one that comes up a lot want to make sure that the user's sure they want to abort throw a message box in here all right if abort then do some stuff, right? End of, end if. Right? We're gonna say right here, if message box, are you sure you want to abort? Right? Comma, VB yes, no cancel, plus VB default button two, so the default is no. Slide over so you can see this little thing. Right? Comma, title is gonna be abort. And if this is anything other than VBS, or I'm sorry, if this equals VBS, if their answer is VBS, then we're going to exit for and if. Otherwise, it'll continue the loop. If they say nowhere canceled, it'll continue the loop. If you want to learn more about v, uh, message box, go watch my message box video. And I got a video on those different message box options, too. Go watch those. I got videos on everything. And if you find a topic about Microsoft Access that I don't have a video for, I want to know about it. If you do a Google search and one of my videos doesn't show up, I want to know, all right, exactly what that search was. I'll make a video about it. That's my goal is to show up on every search, anything Access related. <laughs> but this can be important, especially if you're doing something like sending out an email batch or whatever, and you want to make sure that the user is sure that they abort it so you don't have to start it over again, right? Start, abort. Are you sure you want to abort? No, I'm not sure. Keep going. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, oh, that's a bug. That's a bug. And I'm going to leave this in the video. What's happening? It's checking every loop now because we didn't reset abort. That's important. Now, how do I get out of this? I seem to be seemingly stuck. All right. Yeah, you might have to. Let's see if I can get out of here by hitting escape. Yeah, see? 
I'm running into a situation now where I can't gracefully exit this. I put myself in a, in a locked loop. And in this particular case, now normally you could kill access, but if I just say yes, it's going to exit out of that loop, right? But make sure you put in here, right? Are you sure you want to exit? If they say yes, exit four. Otherwise, abort equals false. Uncheck that box. All right now, let's give it a try. Ready, go. And abort. Are you sure? No. And I should resume. Abort. Oh, cancel. All right. Abort. Are you sure? And yes. All right. There's a reason I leave these mistakes in the video, folks. So you, because you're going to make the same mistakes I did. Now, the tricky part, if you're doing something like an email batch, the tricky part is if you abort it because you want to make a change, right? Let's say you're sending out 10,000 emails and you discovered after the first couple hundred that there's a problem. Well, you already sent it out to a couple hundred people, so you don't want to resend it to them again. So the tricky part is resuming the loop later, right? After you've made your change, now you want to restart the loop, but you want to pick it up at whatever record it, it canceled at before. If you want to see how to do that, post a comment down below. Right, say, yes, I want to see how to resume an aborted loop. So I know what you're talking about. <laughs> All right, post a comment if you want to see that. I'll do it in a future video. Um, one last thing, then I'll let you go. Let's, uh, let's change the colors, right? If it's, uh, when it starts, we'll make it yellow. If it finishes successfully, we'll make it green. And if it's aborted, we'll make it red. So how about up here? We'll say, um, we'll say status box dot back color equals VB yellow. That's one way to do it. We can make this VB yellow, VB green, VB red, blah, blah, blah. Or you can use the RGB, all right, which is for more subtle colors. So let's say if it's aborted, we'll say status box dot back color equals RGB. Let's go 255 comma 200 comma 200. That should be a light red, all right? And I always put after that light red, all right? RGB, the higher this number from 0 to 255, all right? And if this was 0, 0, it would be like a really deep red. And if it finished successfully, we'll make it like a light green. So we'll put that here. I want you to say RG is the 255 this time, and then 200, and then light green. Okay. All right. Let's save it, and we'll come back out meow, and run it. It's yellow because it's running. Let me abort it. Are you sure you want to abort? Yep. Okay. It's red. You can make it a deeper red if you want. I just didn't make those other values lower. And if it's successful, I don't want to sit here through the whole thing, so let's do this again. Let's crank up that. Let's pump up the volume. Ready? Go. And green. Done. See? All kinds of options, all kinds of stuff you can do like this, folks. And I'm just, just scratching the surface. Trust me. If you like this stuff, if you like my videos, if you like learning with me, I got tons and tons of developer lessons on my website. I think I'm up to developer 45. There's dozens and dozens of hours of stuff where I teach you cool tips and tricks like this and how to build databases the right way. So check those out or consider becoming a member of my channel and you can get all my extended cut videos and learn all kinds of new fancy stuff that way too. But that's going to do it. That's your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something, folks. Live long and prosper. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. 
I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90-minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, wanna get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.